Hello everyone, my name is Pierre Gutierrez and today I'm going to talk about how to label images and how to use this information in the recommendation engine. So I want this talk to be uh, really applied, it's going to be an applied introduction to some of the other talks that you're going to see later, for example the one from Olivier about recommendation engines. Um, and so I'm going to start with setting up the context of the project then I'm going to talk about how to iteratively build a recommendation engine, starting from simple ones to more advanced techniques. And then we are going to dive into how to label images. And here what I want to talk about is mostly how to do that in a very pragmatic fashion, without having to reinvent the wheel, uh, train your own models, define your own architecture, uh, if you're a company that doesn't uh, come from GAFA. Then we're going to talk about uh, post-processing, which is kind of uh, how to use images for business intelligence. And finally, we'll see some more uh, results, uh, some images, and so on. Uh, if there are three things to remember from this talk, is mostly uh, do iterative data science. Don't start with uh, working with images right away. Uh, start with a minimum viable product first. Um, don't try to reinvent the wheel. And mostly, uh, if you want to kickstart an image project, start with uh, transfer learning. So, who am I? I'm a data scientist at Dataiku. What we do is we edit a software uh, for data analysts as well as data scientists. And so, in this context, we work with a bunch of different clients, such as uh, e-business uh, companies. The use case today uh, I'm going to talk about is with a, as you may see, uh, e-business vacation retailer, which means that they have an army of salespeople going to negotiate with um, hostels and trip um, companies in order to get the best deal for their clients. They have around 20 million users. They have hundreds of sales open every day, so they really need a um, recommendation engine. And as you may see, uh, the image is really important because it drives the click, uh, especially because the marketing team at this company believes that the purchase is impulsive. You don't go to, see, do, to this website in order to uh, find something at a precise date. You go there just to see, okay, I'm looking for a weekend somewhere, I don't know where exactly. Oh, this uh, in London in two weeks, I'm available, so probably uh, I'm interested and I will purchase it. So some specificities, sorry, some specificities about this business. Um, it's really temporary, which means that any sale stays on the website for only one week or two weeks. So if you know about uh, collaborative filtering, for example, you may see that uh, it's going to be a problem because the matrix is going to be super sparse. Right. The second idea is that the product is very expensive. You can see here that a trip to Machu Picchu in Peru will cost you something like 1,700 euros. So obviously, you don't have that many recurrent buyers. Once again, uh, the matrix is really sparse. So you cannot rely on typical recommendation engine. So what did we do? We started with typical recommendation engines, of course. Um, and we tried to benchmark the two most well-known algorithms, which are collaborative filtering and content-based filtering. So for those of you who don't know how it works, basically um, collaborative filtering would be if you are a person that I know, one of my friends, and you like something, then probably I will like it. Right? So it's recommending items that someone similar to you liked. And how do you define this similarity? In this case, we'll define it by the behavior of the person, which means uh, if I liked, purchased, visited a lot of things common as you, then I'm similar to you. Content based would be more like, um, I will recommend to you something that is close to what you already liked. And this time, the content is what drives the similarity. So basically, that would be, um, you liked a, to go to New York, uh, then I'm going to recommend something similar, such as a city in the US, uh, for example, Chicago. Right, but there are a lot of different uh, factors that could also change this recommendation. So, for example, popularity. Uh, you want to push Paris because uh, you're able to make a lot of money out of Paris. 
you want to be able to retarget people uh, because if you came to the website yesterday uh, and you actually visited one sale, I still want to display that again to you. And finally, you have external factors such as uh, I'm not going to ski in summer uh, and I'm not going to Punta Cana in December. So how do we combine all of these? So basically, the idea here is to do what we call uh, retargeting. Um, and it is to combine the different recommendation engines. So if you had, let's say, 10 recommendations, you could potentially combine them by taking the average of the different ranks. Right? If you all want to be a bit smarter than this, what you can do is uh, take a weighted average of these different ranks. And if you want to optimize that further, you can choose the weights that are optimal uh, based on the probability that someone will purchase this actual uh, sale. So for example here, that would be I try to predict the sale that someone is going to purchase through a logistic regression and take all of my recommendation engine as features. Then what I learn is an optimal way to combine them all. Right. So this is the first or second iteration that we uh, put in production at the client. Uh, it worked really well. It generated uh, plus 7% of revenue uh, when we evaluated that online through a beta testing. Uh, and what we do is we actually score every night all of the sales that are going to be open on the website the next day against all of the customers that came to the website um, 30 days before. So why 30 days before? Mostly because the information that we have on the customer that is older than this doesn't really impact the recommendation. Also, if we score all of the 18 million clients against all of the sales, then the tables start getting really big. So it was too much for the architecture. So basically what we use here is mostly Impala and Spark on Hadoop cluster. And we compute every night uh, sales profiles as well as user profiles. And then we use that uh, in a logistic regression that is basically using uh, scikit-learn. Right. And so I didn't talk about the images yet. So why would that be important? Um, here in the example is the label that I have for my image in my uh, database. And you can see for ski, I'm not exactly selling the same thing on the three images. So on the first one, what I'm selling is ski, adventure, uh, sport. On the second one, what I'm selling is mostly the party after skiing. And on the third one, what I'm selling is the comfort after the party after skiing. Right? Uh, same example on the second one. Um, for sun and beach, the first image that I have is adventure, nature. Second one is uh, Argelès, which is kind of, you know, from south of France. Uh, and the third one, still sun and beach, but you can see that people that will purchase this offer, this sale, are probably more interested by the pool than the actual beach. So this is what we want to capture. So how can we do that? Well, if we were to have something that enables us to label, for example, through a deep learning machine learning model, we would be able to have, for example, for the first image, something like there is a sea, there is a beach, there is a forest, there is a hotel. And so if I take this whole set of tags, basically what I'm able to create for each of these images is one vector of Boolean with one if the tag is present and zero elsewhere. Right. So if I have these different vectors, I'm able to calculate a similarity between the different images. So I have a similarity between the different sales, and I can obviously use that into a content-based recommendation engine that I can in turn use in my uh, meta model for the recommendation system. All right. So how do we label these images now? Here are the common issues that a company will face if they want to do deep learning for uh, image labeling. First thing is they will say, I don't have the architecture, I don't have the GPUs. Uh, then they probably will say, I don't actually have someone that is able to work 
uh, with deep learning. Probably don't have the time either to wait for the 72 hours to train the model. Uh, and especially what's really important is often I don't have any labeled data, or at least my data is not really correctly labeled. So if we go back to the example I had before with ski, all of the images are actually ski, but it's not no use for me in my recommendation engine. So what can we do about this? So the first thing is don't try to reinvent the wheel. First start by looking at the internet, what you can actually find. Um, and so, first thing is, can I find a database where I, where I will have data that is similar to mine? Here, um, you can see that you have on the left the images that we wanted to label, and then we found on the internet two databases. One called Places, where I have 2.5 million images, and one called Sun, where I have only 100,000 images. So you can see that if I'm able to label uh, these places and send database, I will obviously be able to label my images. The good thing is, um, if the data is available and you already have data labeled, there is probably someone that actually developed a machine learning model on top of that, and that you can reuse directly. So in our case, uh, for the places database, there exists something in the Cafe Model Zoo where you actually have a pre-trained model. So it means that I can directly use this model to label my images. And so in this example, you can see that I have uh, something better than nothing, with swimming pool and the fact that it's the outdoor of a hotel. The same way I have tower and sky skyscraper, which is not bad. Now, I also want to use the labels from Sun in order to have a more complete description of my uh, different images. So what can I do now? I could train a model directly on my 100K images, or I can use the other model in order to do transfer learning. So transfer learning, the concept uh, will be defined also by other presenter later, but the idea mostly is to use a network as a feature extractor. So you probably know that uh, when you do deep learning, basically it's effective because the network uh, learn its own features. Well, the idea here is just to cut the end of the network, the softmax and maybe the fully connected part, use the network to transfer the information, so by running uh, propagation of all the image in the network. And in th this new space, you can do a simple uh, machine learning model, such as logistic regression or a um, multi-layer perceptron, for example. So that's what we did, basically, in order to get this label from Sun, what we do is we have the model that is trained on places, we apply it on the Sun database, we now have a new data set on which we can train a model, and this is the model that we are going to use to label the images that we had on the, in the first place. So interesting thing here is that if we do this uh, strategy, we actually get a top five error of 90% on the Sun database, which is way better than what you can do simply by learning the best uh, state-of-the-art model only on the Sun dataset. So that's to illustrate the power of transfer learning. Right. So now we have our images that are labeled. However, uh, we still have some issues. And the one we have, the, the biggest issue that we have is this one. What we did was a classification problem. It's not a detection problem that we uh, did. So basically, we have probabilities and we have tags associated with these probabilities. And if we keep only the five uh, first one, ordered by probabilities, we have these two examples. The first one uh, works kind of well. All the information that I get is complementary. So I let cross sandbar well describe the uh, image. On the other side, though, uh, conference center, conference room, auditorium, uh, really correlated, which means that if I create now a similarity between images, I now have 10 tags, but there is one tag that is auditorium, conference room, and so on, that is placed five times in the um, similarity in the vector, which is five times as mo more than the eyelet one. So what I have is a distance that is really unbalanced. So how can, we, how can we solve this? 
Well, what we do is we use a matrix factorization that leads to four uh, positive points. The first one is dimension reduction, because obviously then when we compute our profile, sales profile, uh, user profile, we now have a space that is smaller, so it's going to be easier to process everything by batch. Then NMF also adds sparsity, which is, again, nice because it's going to be faster. Third item is balancedness. So this solves my problem of having one tag that could count five times as the other ones. And finally, we have explicability, which is really nice because because of that, we can go see the marketer and tell them, well, my image recognition model does that. It, here is what happened in the recommendation engine. So you can understand it, and probably you can help me validate all the steps in the project. So basically, this is what we get. What we get is, for the first image, golf course, fairway, putting green, 31% of the image, then information about the hotel, then information about the swimming pool, and then information about the beach which is perfect because this is actually what we want to get, right? So we, each image is now defined in a space of uh, 30 vectors. So you may see that we have golf course here. So this mostly comes from the labels we have in ImageNet, but it's not really important because what we do is actually a similarity between images, so it could be called a cat, that would be the same thing for me. All right. And so, finally, these are the res results that we get. Uh, the first column is the visits from a user. The second one is the old recommendation engine that we have without the image. The third one is a recommendation based only on the content of the image. And the fourth is the mix of both. So you can see that in the visit, the person came only to click on pool sales. So he probably wants a nice hotel. Um, and mostly they are in France and Morocco. Second one is good, good recommendation. However, the image often don't have pools, so it's good low quality in Morocco or these kind of things, but it's not a hotel with a pool. And the third one, here you can see that it looks nice, but in fact I'm sending the person to uh, Cayman Island or Thailand, which is probably not in the budget of the person. And so we solve this issue by combining both of the different models. So the conclusion of this talk is mostly do iterative data science. If we had started with the images right away, we would never have been able to deploy any of the recommendation engine that we created. Then about the deep learning part, don't start from scratch, don't reinvent the wheel. First, look at what you can find on the web, especially with uh, Cafe Zoo, where you would have a lot of models. And you can use that not only for the labeling of the images, but also as a Kickstarter for any of your projects uh, using uh, libraries such as Keras or Cieno. Um, OK, and so finally, we learned along the way something that is, depending on the sale, on the image of the, sorry, depending on the tag of the image, uh, some sales can perform better than others. And the next step for us is to actually be able to pick the right image for any of the sale, so that not only we display the right sale for you, but we can also dynamically change all of the images that you see on the website to maximize the purchase. And so thank you for your attention. <laughs>